welcome back troglodytes to another episode of Trogly's Guitars. This one's for you KISS fans out there. This is kind of my recreation of the Budokan Les Paul. Obviously it doesn't have the third pickup yet, but you could always put that in. Uh, this guitar kind of came to me as a husk with some original parts, but not a lot. So I kind of have had this guitar for about a month or so now. I haven't made a video on it because I keep making changes because when I first got this guitar this is exactly what I wanted it to look like and all I had were zebra pickups and they were I don't I'm not sure what kind of brand of pickups they were but they weren't fantastic by any means but I was on the my Les Paul forums I am there my username's Trogly if you guys want to follow me there too uh, I found a pretty good deal on these 36th anniversary DiMarzios and the double cream so I said, oh, well, what the heck, we'll just go ahead and get it, put them in, make it look cool, and I'm definitely glad I did. But I, I tried to give this as close to the Ace Freely Budokan that I could without making any permanent changes, just in case the next owner didn't want it to be this forever. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the condition here, and we'll go over what's original and what's not. All right, the front of the headstock here, as you can see, you've got some light scratches from string changes and whatnot. At one point in time, there was a locking nut system on here, but there wasn't a Kaler or anything. That was a pretty popular mod back in the 80s, just for tuning stability. And it looks like they moved the uh, truss rod cover all the way up here. That's why there's a hole there as well. This is not the original truss rod cover. The original one was, you know, chopped up. <laughs> Uh, the tuners are vintage correct. I pulled these from a, uh, I believe it was a 1980 Gibson The Paul Firebrand. One of those that I was parting out. Because the original one had uh, these pearl tipped Grovers. I had purchased some pearl tipped Grovers. If you watch that, I think it was a 2013 Studio Deluxe. I had initially purchased those tuners for this guitar, but even though the package said fits all guitars, it didn't fit this one, so I didn't want to do the reaming of the headstock holes just to have those tuners, just in case the next owner didn't want that. So what I did is I took these vintage 1980 Grover tuners here, and I just painted the tips white to kind of give you that uh, pearl look. Obviously this paint is not going to stay on. You might want to go ahead and uh, take it to your luthier and know go ahead and ream the headstock to let the newer tuners fit I can say uh, for 63 bucks those other tuners were uh, they're fantastic tuners so definitely an option for somebody to uh, purchase those tuners and do that you still have the original nut it functions just fine the frets have a pretty good life left to them I mean obviously there's some light wear I mean this is from 1981 and it has been played as you'll see here once we get to the back of the neck but just very, you know, I would say moderate fret wear. Uh, there's some light, um, you know, flat spots, but it plays just fine. Nothing to worry about. It was just uh, cleaned, fretboard was oiled, gorgeous ebony. Once again, you've got your 36th anniversary DiMarzios in here. <clears throat> they sound really good. They're pretty hot pickups. So definitely a cool stage guitar here. I'm, I'm not 100% sure what ones the Budokans have. I know I was looking it up, but that was about a month ago. But I know there were some variations, so I just went with these guys. I mean, it's up to you if you wanted to get some different double creams or add that third pickup, which I think would be awesome. Because if I remember correctly, I know I have it in my listing. I think Aces was a 77. I'll, I'll have it corrected on the screen if I got that wrong. Uh, but I added this pick guard. Uh, it's not a Gibson branded pick guard. I mean, it's not super thick, but it's not, you know, the thinnest thing ever. It doesn't have a pick guard bracket, so it's not really raised up. I think what I have on this one, you can kind of see it right here, is the neck pickup ring is kind of sitting on top of it to keep it in place so it's not moving around. But you do have a screw there, so it's mainly just for the ace look. You could always take it off if you wanted to. I mean, pretty much everything on this guitar has been redone. Uh, except for, I believe the bridge and tailpiece are still original. And uh, I think, well, these plastics were probably changed. So, 
I mean, it's got shower strap buttons. Pretty much the only thing original is this one. So it's not necessarily a collector's guitar. This is one for, you know, the Bubicon vibe, Ace Freely fan. Uh, you've got your uh, newer age uh, golden speed knobs to complete the look. But really, uh, the top, I like this middle piece on the top. It's pretty active. It's pretty cool right there. I, I do enjoy that. And I love the burst on this one. It's kind of got that in-between oranges phase here, which I think looks really good. Uh, Condition-wise, we'll run it over the light here. You can see there's quite a few, you know, light nicks and dings. I mean, no major gashes or anything, but definitely has some players where I would say uh, spots to point out right here. You kind of got some uh, dings from playing. Uh, definitely in this area, lots of light impressions. Hopefully these are showing up well enough for you guys to see, especially that long one right there. But overall, I mean, it's just a really cool vintage player's guitar. We'll go ahead and take a look at the back of the headstock here. Serial number 81181510, made in USA. You can see where the original Schaller holes for the tuners would have been. Now, if you don't want to go, you know, the full Budokan vibe, I was kind enough not to drill these uh, screws for you. So if you wanted to go back to the original Schaller's type tuners and not make the modifications, you could do that with very little evidence that these were ever here. I mean, tuning stability is fine. I mean, you could always drill the pilot holes if you want. Uh, the best thing about drilling those holes is they can be put on a little more straight. I think I did an okay job, but that one's maybe a little crooked. But you do have some light dings, but no breaks, cracks, or repairs. As you can see, the finish was either played off or sanded off. It feels really natural, so I'm gonna guess it was played off. But what I kind of like about it is, this is where the yellow burst would be. So it almost just looks natural, because it is kind of yellow itself. So it's not the ugliest, you know, worn down neck I've ever seen. I would definitely say it's a 60s profile with just a little bit more to it. Uh, some 60s are really, really thin, but this one, it's, it's just got a little extra, I would say. So it's definitely a comfortable guitar to play. Looks like you got a, some light dings over here, but nothing too bad. And it is a, a three-piece maple neck here. And you do kind of get your finish back up here. There's some wear here and uh, into the binding as well on the finish. But honestly, it's a great playing guitar. Uh, one thing I missed here is since it's resting on that uh, pick guard there, the pickup ring does raise up a little bit there. On to the back of the guitar here. Uh, honestly, it's not too bad. You do have this small patch of buckle rash, but it's not chipping or anything. It's not brittle. So very good guitar there, but you can see all the uh, buckle wear here once I hit the light on it. I mean, this guitar isn't trashed, but it definitely has that uh, road-worn vibe to it. And really, this is a very nice playing guitar. It sounds pretty good with the DiMarzios, and if you're a, you know, a, a KISS fan, this is a definite must-have. Because why pay four grand for a reissue when you can get this, something that's closer to what his guitar actually is, for a little more than half of that price. I mean, obviously this one has, you know, some extra holes, but I would take an original modified guitar over one of the reissued ones any day. This is a very cool guitar. We will take a look under black light here. You can kind of see some of the nicks and dings, some of the shadows where the locking nut was and all that, but truss rod works fine. I think I forgot to mention there is a little chunk of the binding missing there that could easily be patched up by your luthier. And you can see some of the paint is starting to come off. Once again, that's not gonna stay forever. That was just kind of a, a temporary, this is what it could look like. Modern Les Paul custom truss rod cover there. On to the body, it's glowing the way it should. Kind of see some of the nicks and dings a little bit better this way. Non-original knobs, as I already said. And uh, it's looking good on the front. Back of the headstock time, you can see you've got some wear and tear on the uh, very top of it, but overall, nothing too unexpected. No brakes, cracks, or repairs, thankfully. That's just kind of where the uh, finish ends, right there. And then we go down. 
see where it does that funny lining there as well. So definitely the original finish. You can see the uh, buckle wear on the back here a little bit better as well as that area where the clear coat is now missing. And you've got some wear here. So the guy was definitely a, a sweaty guy that used to own this guitar. I definitely did a lot of cleaning to this guitar. Because it, it, the neck was really like sticky, but I've definitely cleaned the majority of that off. This one currently weighs 10 pounds, 7.9 ounces. This guitar comes in a non-original SKB hard shell case with TSA latches. Honestly, this case is probably better than a Gen 3 chainsaw case that it probably originally would have came in or it would have came in one of the cheaper Gibson cases. But these are really nice cases. I mean, as you can see, it's got a lot of storage marks and white smears and whatnot, but they're really solid and I love these latches. They just kind of close and then you pinch them at the bottom here and they just come right up. They are very nice latches. I mean, these aren't gonna break like your Gen 3 chainsaw ones will. And they're not as thick as a Gen 3 chainsaw. I mean, nothing against, you know, chainsaw cases, but I definitely prefer the first and second generation and would take this case over one of those if it came down to not necessarily uh, cost, but protection. As you can see here, you still have a nice little uh, compartment in here. You've got a, uh, some keys. It looks like you got a height adjustment screw in here too. But it's a good fit. As you can see, it is a good fit. I mean, it moves around a very negligible amount. Up and down a little bit more so, but I'll definitely pack you some extra bubble wrap there to uh, prevent that. But really, it doesn't hit anything moving up and down. And unless you're going with your guitar, that won't matter anyways. It'll just be the side to side motion. So it is definitely a good fit and definitely protecting the guitar. We will be demoing through a Marshall JMP 1C 1 watt tube amplifier. some high gain there is a little bit of a, a grounding buzz like when you hit uh, like a piece of metal it will stop so I'm not sure what's causing that you might want to take it to your luthier to get that fixed
If you think you might be interested in owning this Ace Freely like custom, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash T-R-O-G-O-Y-S, T-R-O-G-O-Y-S, or check out the eBay, eBay or Reverb listings. All right, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, Troglodytes, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.